Okay, so I just had the uh, most amazing Edric game um, playing against a pretty terrible deck, actually. But he got the magic um, turn one soul ring going first. So uh, I had to record this game just because of how long it is and uh, all the complicated decisions and complex board positions. So anyway, um, I'm playing Edric. He's playing Prime Speaker Zagana. So it's a good chance to see which creature is better, and sometimes Prime Speaker is better, and one of those times is when you get Soul Ring. But, we'll see how this works out. So I keep, you know, a, a kind of a slow hand, actually. Um, thought it would be okay, but uh, look at this ramp. Soul Ring into Cultivate Elves. Oh boy. Not good. So, um, he's got... Uh, so he's got two, three, four, five, six, seven mana next turn. I've got a maximum of four. He gets down with Garrick. Primal Hunter. That is not good at all. So I was thinking about um, sacking the Elder here, but I have that Cradle in my hand, and I thought maybe I'd play Land Dryad, keep the Cradle active. I really wasn't sure what I was going to do, and I was trying to figure out how to make Unified Will come on board. I was hoping to uh, be able to counter his Prime Speaker. Um, and um, for whatever reason, I decide I'm not going to do anything here. I really should have probably just Simic Charmed his Beast and then hit his Garrick, maybe? I, I don't know. Cast my Dryad? Cast my Edric? I should have done something, but saying go is the worst choice. However, that's what I did. He plays Jace's Mind Seeker. So the top five cards in my library are going to the graveyard. He can play instants or sorceries from them. Uh, without paying the mana cost. Fortunately, this deck um, doesn't always... I mean, it doesn't have a ton of instants and sorceries. It is a good bit. But I got lucky and he missed that. Unfortunately, on the other hand, I lost a Treachery and a Metamorph. A pretty powerful... Um, but so it goes. So I just decided, okay, well, forget the Elder Plan. I'm just going to develop. Should have done that last turn. With the Dryad, but oh well. So get down with Hermit. Trying to figure out if I can... I'm, I'm still trying to kind of get Unified Will on board, but I do have the Cradle in my hand also, so I've got a nice curvy play next turn. He draws eight, uh, five cards off Prime Speaker. Please deadly let Recluse, so... Luckily he's not playing like, I don't know, Dudley Recluse, that's not what I consider a good card, so. But most of the rest of his cards are pretty good, so I, I can't say he's not playing good cards, it's just, he's got a few sketchy choices in there that are helping me out pretty, pretty significantly. So, there's Cradle, and I finally ramp like I should have earlier. Going to get an Arbor to fuel Cradle, and I have a Sylvan, and I was thinking... Yeah, I'm pretty good here, because, you know, I'm going to take another hit. Um, usually this kind of... Uh, usually against players like this, if you clutter the board up with enough things, it uh, convinces them not to swing. They don't take the time to do the math and figure out, like, how you would block and all that. They just look at it. It looks confusing. He's got, like, a flyer to attack with, so he probably won't swing. That was my plan. The other thing was, like, he could have gone ultimate with Garrick here, and then I'm in a horrible spot, but um, I was kind of banking on greed. And uh, s sometimes that's all you can do. So he grips the Sylvan, which is a real bummer. Obviously, like, at this point in the game, and then plays this, so he's going to be drawing cards off of drawing cards to draw cards so he can draw more cards. And um, he's greedy for him, so... That's what he does. He takes six cards instead of uh, making, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight creatures. And really, I, I can't, I can't blame him for it. I can definitely see the appeal there. He could potentially draw another six next turn. So, well, if I didn't have this in play, so Eight more damage. He has to discard some of those cards he drew. Is Snapcaster. Nothing to target. So. 
At this point, as far as creature count goes, I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. He's up by 2. Even if I play Snapcaster and bounce a creature, I still could not Unified Will. So... Now I'm about down by 1. I swing in, and I was, I was very tempted to just go after him and try to... Like, because I, I put in Merchant Scroll in the deck, so I wanted to, like, draw Mystical Teachings, Merchant Scroll, or, um, or, uh, you know, the Overload Bounce spell. That's the card I want, right? But I decide Garak is just too dangerous, and if he draws another six cards, I'm definitely doomed, so I just try and grow the Dryad and take down Garak. If I had played Dryad, of course, earlier, like I had wanted to, Garak would have died before he drew the three extra cards. I mean, this game would have been totally different. Not like I wanted to, but like I, I wish I had, I, I should say. So, blatant thievery he has on my guy's Cradle, which is so bad <laughs> for me. Cradle and Soul of the Harvest is like, I mean, he could just go off drawing guy after guy, right? I have to, of course, I have nothing I can do about it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I can tap two and snap cast or bounce. Like, there's just no way. I have to let it go. And he has Homeward Path, so... <coughs> I don't know. Blatant Thievery Homeward Path combo, I guess. <coughs> so he gets on with Recluse and... Um, at this point, I'm not willing to trade even a single squirrel for the recluse. So, I'm just going to take a point of damage. Of course, I have to take the four there. Um, but then I realized, like, okay, I have a better play. I need to really, like, I have to gum up the ground. So, here's the better play. Maybe not better, but here's the play I make. Snapcaster the Simic Charm. Block the spider so I don't take damage. And pick up the hermit. Of course, if I had had my cradle, I'd have been a lot better off. But by making this play, I end up taking the same damage due to City of Brass. But I don't. Um, next turn, I'm going to have more creatures than him, so Unified Will comes on board. And look at that. Top decking. Except, how bad is Win Orb when your opponent just took your guy's cradle and has mana elves and you have none? So, first things first, let's see what Eater can find. A priest to go with the orb, so it's looking a little tastier. So you get down with Strange Hermit, making Unified Will active. And I say go because I don't really want to tap out for an orb here. Um, maybe I should have. I don't know. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 10, 11, 12, 13? No, he would have definitely cast that, and I would not have been able to counter it, but... Fortunately, I decided not to go with the Orb plan, so I unified well as Darksteel Colossus. He's actually not that great against me, the Colossus, except that, um... Depending on what I have going on, but, uh... Um, since I've already burned through a lot of bounce and, um, theft and cloning and stuff, so and at this point I don't have an answer, I don't really have the life to afford myself the luxury of taking the time to find an answer, I, I had to counter him. So he grows, um, goes and gets Blatant Thievery, I think, yep. And uh, also draws a card off Soul of the Harvest. The card's such a pain in my butt, this whole game. And then steals. I was like, you know, what is he going to steal? Probably Edrix, what I would have taken. He takes Strange Hermit. I don't think he read the card very carefully. It's not squirrel creatures you control, it's all of them. So this does nothing to me. Except prevent me from having to pay the upkeep and make him have to pay it. <laughs> if he wants to keep it around. So that's awesome. And he swings on the Prime Speaker. And I just decide I'm going to take it all. I don't want to trade guys for that. And then just put it back in his hand and let him draw more cards. At the same time, I need to stick it in his hand with orb, but I want to wait. So, oh, top decking, a bribery. So bribery gets in as my first thing. I probably should have drawn a card off Edric first, but I, I didn't know what I would 
I didn't know what I would see, and maybe what I saw would change my mind as far as attacking or something along those lines. So I decided to bribe first. And here is the guy's deck. So he's got... Awareness. Nothing. So he does play Rift also. This is a Jace Praetor's Council. He's playing just all kinds of big, expensive things. Like, I guess this guy plays to draw Soul Ring every game and have it not be destroyed. Um, but, uh, here are my options for creatures. So, what I chose to do was take Sylvan Primordial and shut off the Cradle. Oh, excuse me, shut off the Homeward Path. I had to kill the Homeward Path because otherwise he's just going to take his Primordial back. But by taking the Primordial, I can now block this and this. So, and this. So, I've kind of like stopped his offense temporarily. I really wanted to kill the dang, the dang cradle, but of course I couldn't. And here I make like a sort of a risky judgment call play, but I go for orb instead of priest. Now, what I should have done, of course, was attack first and seen what I'd drawn, and then made my decision. Because having seen the witness, I would have played the priest and said go. That way I could untap and witness up um, any of these wonderful things. Most likely bribery. Um, again. So anyhow, he just opts not to uh, pay for my own personal crusade. Which makes sense. And then plays a solemn. Um, gets to draw a card and put a land into play, so that's fine. Comes into play tapped. Then he plays an arch druid, and I'm like, oh my gosh, how much mana is this guy going to have in his big mana deck? But anyway, so he sends in Prem Speaker, and I'm willing to trade. I can't keep taking hits. It's going to be a couple of turns. Like, he's going to have to choose between untapping Cradle and untapping, you know, Islands. So, with his, with his arch druid out, untapping Islands is a lot less pain, painful. So, um, but still, it's less less Cradle action for him over there. So I definitely make that trade. On my turn, I take a card. Oh, and look at that beautiful sword right there. So it's going to be a couple of turns before I can do much, but... Um, so he has enough mana to replay Prime Speaker, but he doesn't. He plays Clone. So what do you clone here? I'm not entirely sure. But he chooses... Primordial, and kills my orb, and at this point I'm pumping the fist, because the only thing holding me back, it was going to be next turn play priest, the turn after that, you know, play sword and equip it. Now I get to do it all next turn. So awesome. So he gets another tapped land. I'm like, yes! And he wastes a clone. Wow. And of course I, you know, trade nothing for this card, it's just another card in his hand. And I, I probably should have just put, like, a mass of scrolls in front of the recluse and just stopped taking damage. But, um, anyway, so I top deck Snap, which is awesome. Snap is, like, I'm constantly surprised by how good this card is. Anyway, so, um, Sword comes down. Goes on the, uh, Dryad, of course. And I top for two for Priest. Not sure why I took damage with the city. I think I wasn't paying attention to the fact that Arbor uh, was hiding up there. And all my odds on tap. I draw a card, which is Ghost Chamber. That's a great card to go with the snap. So. Witness. Gets. What do you think? Oh, I don't think we'll think about it too hard here. Easy call. Gotta get the orb. Um, got to slow him down. Especially now that I've got things to go with it. So I pick up a forest, and um, obviously I don't want to pick up a island of shackles. And I play my orb. And I'm feeling pretty solid right now. Especially since he untapped that blue. And then he plays Luan, and I was like, oh my gosh, I lose. And then I'm like, wait a minute. That is pretty good. I just... He's giving me a Snapcaster. How awesome is that? 
So, yeah, great. For some reason, I was used to have, you know, I was expecting maybe to have a lot more blue creatures than I actually have. But that does not hurt me at all. And in fact, by bouncing Snapcaster, he may have helped me out. So, he plays Oracle of Moldiah. Revealing a changeling. I'm going to kind of hide his library up here. And he gets some lands. Because he draws a card off of the... Uh, he reveals the changeling, but he draws off the harvest. And this thing is interesting. Put your life up, up to seven if you're less than it, and uh, and it keeps it there. It's a creature with um, worship built in for seven life instead of one. Kind of neat. So he sends in the Recluse and the Primordial. Again, this is just one of those players, I think, that doesn't do well when the ground is gummed up. And I'm taking advantage of that. Part of the reason I replayed the Hermit was just to make it look like I had more board presence than I do. I mean, think about how much better things go for him if he just turns everybody sideways. I mean, what am I going to do? Trade three scrolls for this and three for this and then just die, right? So I throw Primordial in front of Primordial and two squirrels. I just throw five squirrels in front of uh, Deadly Recluse. He gets to kill one squirrel with the Recluse, two with his Primordial, and his Primordial goes down and his Recluse goes down. So I traded three squirrels for a Recluse and a Primordial. Seems like a good deal. And at the end of his turn I was like, oh, okay, I'll snap now. And then I realized, nope, don't need to. Snap works on your turn. Better, in fact, since I have the Ghost Chamber untapped. So draw Spell Pierce. So actually, I'm going to just kind of move his library. Well, I suppose it's okay up there, but it looks like it's in play. I just have to remember it's his library. So I snap my Witness. And Witness. Targeting. And a Morph. And shackles. Take his little wand. Play a land. Take a point of damage. Oh no, cast an Edric, excuse me. And hit him with the Dryad so I can draw a card. And untap all my lands, which is so nice. Look at that, Rofellos. Excellent. So I draw Rofellos. And after combat. He says good game, but he was lagging really bad, so I explained to him later, how, I explained to him how to turn off foil animations, and then he does, and he says that clears it up, and so we continue with the game. So, I clone the Primordial and kill the Cradle, fetching the land, which is useful to me, coming in play tapped, thanks to Sword of Feast and Famine. And I, and I give up, uh, and I play Rafaelis. Yeah, we were having a conversation, like, I was like, man, it sucks that he's, you know, Seems like a shame that he's going to quit on this great game, basically, due to lag. And then when he told me he didn't have foils off, I realized what was up. So, he plays Elder Scale Worm. I don't care. We'll deal with that later. He draws a card and spummer. And now I've got, like, double Primordial. And... It's probably not... He probably doesn't want to be swinging here. Come on. Game. Why? So, yeah, I guess I'm lagging too. And he plays Forgotten Ancient. Which will, of course, draw him a card. Why do I have to click this so many times? So, in response, since I had planned to play the Snapcaster anyway, I play the Snapcaster targeting Snap. He's a Snapcaster after all. And I play the Snap on Witness... And then I untap the arbor in case I'm going to need a blocker, and I have Simic for um, Spell Pierce if I need it. I did that in response just to prevent him from getting a couple extra counters. Okay, so I give him his Luan back. It's not that important um, to me now. Draw for the turn and uh, play my Witness, I believe. I was trying to figure out the best way to tap mana to get it done. So finally I resettle on Rafaelis. And a witness for library, of course. I 
against Fatty McFatterson over here. Tapping out, exactly right, to Bribery. And I get Progenitor Mimic. So he comes into play as a copy of a creature, and every upkeep I get to um, copy uh, that creature again and again and again. So I copy Witness, and I Witness on Bribery, of course. Smack him with the sword, draw a card. Interestingly, I actually haven't played a land this turn, so that's another island for me if I want it. So anyway, first things first, bribery. And I go get Metamorph, and because I'm bribering it, I'm not casting it, I can work around Lawan, but it'll still trigger. So I make a clone of Lawan, taking care of this and this, and also the possibility of him playing his commander. And that's it. I think that was the straw that broke the camel's back. He, he gives up. Um, next turn, every turn, I'm going to witness bribery and bribery and bribery and bribery. And that's how the game's going to go. Hit you with a sword, bribery you forever and ever and ever. And, uh, and uh, at some point, I'm just going to shackles. Um, probably soon was going to shackles his... Uh, probably his Forgotten Ancient, maybe his Oracle. It didn't matter, right? I mean, he was going to take one of his guys and... You know, dominance was established. Eventually, I get to draw my, I get to draw my, uh, bounce everything spell or one of my fetch cards for it, and he will lose. So, I guess he saw the handwriting on the wall. Infinite witness. Anyhow, here's the deck list. Um, I have to say that progenitor mimic is a very interesting card. That might make it in here. I don't know. Uh, just that, that whole uh, unlimited cloning thing seems kind of nutty. And considering I have two 5-drops and no 6-drops, I could actually pod it into it. So it's something worth a thought. Anyway, like I was saying, I took out, um, I took out the green one uh, elf that uh, you discard a creature and search for a creature. Um, most of the time it was just a grizzly bear elf for me. I almost never used it. Uh, and I put in Merchant Scroll because I wanted more ways to go get Cyclonic Rift. And you can see how helpful it was for me in that game to have the Merchant Scroll. Well, okay, maybe not. But at least this way I've got three ways to go get Rift instead of um, instead of two, which is a pretty significant upgrade. So I hope you enjoyed that game. I know this was a very long recording, but it's a pretty epic um, Edric battle. And if you uh, go back and re re review the first couple of turns, it, it seems like an impossibility to even come back from something like that. So I was pretty happy about it. Thank you for watching. See you next time.